Hello everybody and welcome to my review of volume number 10 of Fujino Omari's light novel series Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? This one released by Yen On. If you'd like to pick up your own copy, I do have links to the book depository and Amazon.com in the description. Now, this one picks up, of course, after the events of volume number nine, in which we are introduced to the Xenos, which are intelligent monsters residing in the dungeon. And not just intelligent, they are people in terms of they have emotions, they have personalities, they have dreams of all things. Volume number nine was very, very interesting in how it used the Xenos to start introducing a whole other dimension to the labyrinth. Now, in this volume, we have that continuing. The Xenos, of course, are trying to find themselves a new place to hide away from the hunters of Ikelos family. Um, in the midst of doing that, one of their parties is attacked. A number of the Xenos are killed several others are kidnapped and this is the last straw that's it it breaks the camels the proverbial camels back and the xenos attack they attack rivera which is of course the safe haven on the 18th floor this throws everything into an uproar and Bell is sent with Ganesha family, some of their elites, down into the dungeon to try and figure out what's going on. And of course, Ganesha family is chosen because they have some knowledge of the Xenos, or at the very least, uh, they are a family that has been tasked with taming monsters, so they're much more likely to sort of deal with the monsters and take them alive. It all goes to hell, of course. I mean, nothing would ever be simple in this series. And of course, Bell is going to find himself tested. Tested about what side he wants to be on in history, what side he himself can stomach and handle, and whether he can be true to his ideals when they are at such a conflict with pretty much everyone and everything else. The first thing I will say is, like every volume of Danmachi, these books are very well written. They are some of the best writing in terms of the light novel series that we have in English. Wonderful descriptions, uh, the characters' emotions and everything else come through so strongly. Uh, if I had any, well it won't be a complaint, but I will point out that this book is very much about Bell. Uh, and about some of the new characters, the Xenos characters. Uh, the rest of Hestia family are pretty much sidelined for a good chunk of this book. The other thing that kind of surprised me about this book was just how much action there was. If, if you thought that there wasn't enough fighting in, I don't know, the last like two or three volumes of Don Machi, well, I'd say this volume alone makes up for it. I, it is probably like, I'd say at least two thirds of the book are all about battles. And I think the thing is, is that in this book, those battles are such an emotional ringer because who do you root for? You know, this is, this is one of those really interesting light novels that without being preachy in any way has created a situation where you can actually see how these wars between two groups can occur where neither of them are wrong. Neither of them are villains, but it is only because of a misunderstanding, because of a lack of communication, because of a lack of willingness to understand one another that you have this horrible tragedy and bloodshed taking place place it's it's gut-wrenching at times and especially the with bell being at the center of it you know one of the things that i have said about this series in the past and it is always true is that bell it, even though 
I mean, it's so funny, right? Because we talk a lot about very vanilla type main characters. And, and one of the things that we always say is, oh, they're just nice guys, like nice guys. But the thing about Belle that elevates him, I mean, Belle is a good, decent kid who has an incredible heart and it shows, it shows in his abilities. It shows in the abilities that he has developed. I mean, the series works because everything that happens is true to the character, but it isn't just the element of Bell's personality and that, you know, his, his abilities complement his personality and the types of abilities that he's developed complement his personality. It is the fact that Bell is constantly being tested. He does not get to make easy choices. He does not get to just be flexible and do whatever he feels like. He is constantly being put into situations that are hard, that question his morals, that put him to the test and ask him constantly, who are you going to be? Will your actions back up your words? Are you just saying pretty things or are you going to to walk the walk that you talk the talk. And I love this series because Bell does make those choices. He's pushed into them and it's not washed away. Like there are consequences. This book, I, I mean, it ends the story. Like, I mean, definitely when you finished book nine, you knew, okay, we're going to get more Zeno story next volume it's going to keep going but but this this volume like even though the mains it feels like the main Zeno's story is over the repercussions of what happens in this book are going to be I cannot imagine how they're not going to be felt for volumes and volumes to come because uh, I mean I can't say a lot without spoiling things and this is not a book to be spoiled. This is a book to go into as blind as possible and just experience it. Um, but, but I will say that, yes, it, it is one of those books that is just, like I said, it's gut wrenching in, in this situation that's been set up and, and that it doesn't try to make it all easy and it doesn't try to just kind of wipe it under the carpet at the end of it and, oh, they lived happily ever after. No, like this book still ends with a lot of uncertainty and, and our characters in a position where you just know that there's difficulties coming and, and you just don't know how things are ever going to get put right because of what's happened. And yet at the same time, it is, th this whole series is really setting Bell up as this hero, as this, you know, mythic character. Like, I, I think what's really interesting is that we, if you take a look at this as, as a myth, right? Um, and I mean, you, you should, because I mean, if I recall, that was the original title was Familia Myth. And if you look at it that way and you sort of say, okay, like, let's take a character like, I don't know, Hercules. I mean, it, it seems a little, well, I know actually Hercules is probably a pretty good example. So let's say we take Hercules and let's say Hercules started off as this scrawny kid who had this romantic idea that he wanted to be an adventurer, that he wanted to be a hero. And instead of us seeing Hercules as the accomplished son of a god who was able to do all these incredible tasks and everything, instead of joining him there, we join him starting his story as that scrawny kid. And we follow him as he grows and develops and becomes a hero. A hero not just because of what he is capable of doing, but because of the moral stances that he takes because of him being true to his beliefs, even in the face of adversity. And even when it seems like everybody else disagrees, it's, 
that is what this book is. And that is the journey it feels like we are on with Belle. And, and really, I mean, that point gets hit home every now and then, but I would say this book really does that. I mean, there's no mistake why Belle spends most of this book alone or the book seems to focus so heavily on Bell. And I think it is that kind of idea that it's almost symbolically setting him apart because he is different. He is apart from everybody else. And wow, this is just, oh my God, I love this series. <laughs> you know, um, I know a number of you were angry at me that I didn't read this volume 10 before the end of last year. And you said to me, oh, Don Machu would have placed higher on your end of the year if you had read this volume. And, and you know what? I've read it now. And you're, you, you may very well be right. Um, like, I, I think that this volume, as much as it is a really good volume, and it is, it's an excellent volume. I, I think more what impresses me is this series as a whole, that every volume is building this character and adding to this character. And, and like I said, the decisions are never easy and the ramifications are never easy. And, you know, there is always a price to be paid. And I really respect the fact that this book does that, that it, it doesn't make life easy for its hero, that it doesn't just tidy everything up at the end and sort of been like, oh, everybody was happy and smiles and they're all friends again. And, you know, and, and that it makes it so that it shows that you can be right. You can be right. And, and the hero and yet still have to deal with crap and still sometimes be alone. It's such a, a an incredible series that way. Uh, unlike, I mean, it really is unique, I would say, in, in regards to a lot of light novels. And it, it kills me, <laughs> kills me that it's got this dopey title of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Because... It is such a good series, and when people see you with that title or you try to recommend it to them with this title, they just kind of shut down on you because they're like, oh yeah, it's one of those books. And, you, and, and it doesn't matter how much you try to convince them otherwise. You're like, no, listen to me. Um, and, and I don't think the anime helped. The anime wasn't bad, but uh, I really don't think the anime did anywhere near the justice to this series. And I will definitely say that the series gets better beyond those first five volumes that the anime pretty much compressed and smashed together and cut a bunch of stuff out. Uh, but the series gets better beyond that. Like volumes seven, nine, and 10. I mean, even volume six. I mean, like all of these books have just been really excellent. Um, and, and I'm going on and on and gushing over this series, but I just can't help it. You know, whenever I read another one of these volumes, I, I just am reminded that this is 10 books now. And every time I stand here saying how impressed I am with this series, every time I'm standing here saying how much I like the characters in this series and, and this volume, like I said, to make it so that I mean, yeah, okay, there is a clear villain, okay, like Ikelos family, the, the hunters, they are definitely villainous, but but so much of this book isn't even about them against the Xenos, and, and during those parts, it is just heart-wrenching, because you're like, I, I don't know what side to be on, and because both sides are right and both sides are wrong, and yeah, it's just, wow, 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 I... You know, in some ways, like, I'm glad I've read it, but uh, in other ways, I'm kind of like, I wish I had just held off until volume 11 was a lot closer because now I got to wait. But, uh, well, thankfully, I've got a ton and ton of light novels to occupy me until then. So volume number 10 of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Excellent, excellent volume. Um, Obviously, ended in an excellent series. And if you haven't read this series yet, if you've watched my videos on this series and you haven't bought it yet, why, why go, go get it, pick it up, 
binge it. Um, maybe leave, you know, this one until it's a little closer to volume 11. So you're not going to suffer, but you know, just do it. Pick this series up. Um, like I said, I know it's got a sort of dopey title, but don't worry about that. Get past the title, past it. And even if you thought the anime was meh, trust me, the books are so, so much better. And the events that happen beyond the anime are even better than that. So, so those are my thoughts on volume number 10 of Don Damachi. My next review is going to be on a book that I've been saying for a while now that I've wanted to read and I've been putting off, I guess. But now, seeing as how volume number, the next volume of this book is coming out tomorrow and I have it in the mail on its way to me, I figure it's probably a good time to pick it up and read it. That's going to be volume number seven of Strike the Blood. Uh, this one I've been looking forward to checking out because it's finally going to start revealing sort of the story, the backstory of everything that's been going on. And, and that's probably one of the things that I've been most looking forward to in this series. So volume seven of Strike the Blood will be my next review. So if you love light novels and you're brand new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. I do two to three reviews every single week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.